Hello, uh, in this video we're talking about um, electric field due to a surface uh, over a surface, or an infinite surface. Basically, not really a surface, but a plane. Uh, electric field over an infinite plane. And, um, oh, my, somebody's uh, messaging me on Steam. But, uh, basically, um, this is uh, this is what we're working with here. If you if you want to get sort of a visual, um, we have this we have the x y z axis and we have this plane, an x y plane, and uh, this plane actually extends in all in the x both x directions and both y directions. It's actually infinite in that uh, respect, and um, we're just finding a point above the plane somewhere. So we just any point we want in the, above the plane, we just shift our coordinate axis, so that point has coordinates 0, 0, H. Um, and, uh, you know, I say, it, it might sound kind of weird weird saying um, uh, an infinite sheet, but uh, basically you do these sort of things because it's, it's an approximation, because uh, things turn out a little differently if it's not an infinite sheet. You have to take different things into account. And uh, this is a good approximation, um, you know, for if you have a plate like a copper plate or something. So uh, this is our geometry. Uh, this this is the point we're interested in, zero 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 zero, zero h. Um, and we're going to be working in polar coordinates. I use rho. That's a p I know, but I use rho as the the r for polar coordinates. That's the angle. And uh, this is going to be our vector r from the source of the charge to the point. Now, if we go back to this, uh, if you remember from the previous video where we did a line charge, we had this differential element of electric field equal to this, where a sub r is in the direction of this r right here. And, um, yeah. This, this is the magnitude of that R, this is the differential charge, and this is the constant that's always in the denominator. Uh, also, we said that the surface charge was equal to this. This is a surface integral. It's the surface charge density over the surface. And um, in this video, we're going to be assuming that rho sub s surface charge density is constant. Put these two guys together, boom, we get this guy. Uh, this is pretty much what we had last time, and it's the same sort of type of approach. We have to uh, we have to um, get each part of this integral and just put it all together. So we're gonna get r first. So if we get, let's see if I still, uh, oops, r, come on, bold. There we go. R, bold, bold because it's a vector. Uh, let's see. Well, what's what's our r gonna be? It's gonna be it's this guy, right? So what coordinates does that have in the polar coordinate system? Now, well, obviously it's gonna have a z component of h, and uh, I never like to say obviously because sometimes like uh, it'll be in a book, and uh, it'll say this is obviously that, and sometimes it's just like no, no, it's not. Like to me, I feel really stupid when people say obviously and I don't get it. And, uh, like, sometimes that happens, like, in the solutions manual. Like, I got a solutions manual, and I, uh, I look up one of the solutions, and it says, straightforward. That, like, that's it. Okay, this is in one of my math classes. It said, straightforward. And I was like, wow, I must be really, you know, I felt really stupid, because, I, fr I mean, I got it eventually, and I was like, oh, yeah, that is straightforward. But I'm thinking, like... You're like it's a solutions manual. You put a little bit more than straightforward. Uh, anyway, I'm getting a little off topic, but um, like that's crazy. But uh, yeah, well, so we we have a coordinate in the z direction of h, and uh, we're gonna have a coordinate in the rho direction. But the interesting thing to note is that the coordinates are not going to be just rho in the rho direction and h in h direction. It's actually going to be, I'm going to write this down as I'm saying it, it's going to be negative, it's going to be rho in the negative rho direction. As soon as I write that down, okay, so we have rho, a sub, rho, and I'm going to explain in a, in a minute why. And we have h, 
uh, a sub z. Now, um, stop talking to me. Uh, <laughs> so, why is it negative? Well, because, think about it. Remember, in polar coordinates, it's always from the origin. Um, so, if it were, if it were in fact, rho h, it would be a distance, um, the vector would look, I'm going to undo this as soon as I do it, it's, let me put it in uh, red or something, red because it's wrong, um, it would be in this direction starting from the origin and then it would be up h, it would actually look something like this, it would be up like that and that's, that's not what we want, we actually want the opposite. If we start at a negative rho, it actually, well, technically it goes this way and up. Um, but if you th remember, this is these are vectors, so you can shift, you could translate the vector any way into any position you want. Uh, it doesn't have to start at the origin. Uh, so if we just move this over here, it'll be this vector. Yes, we could translate this guy too, but we're, we can't. You can't rotate a vector. You can only translate it. That's why it has to be negative rho and up z. So it can be this. It can just move it to this one. Kind of confusing at first. But uh, that's what it's going to be, and uh, consequently, our magnitude, I'm just going to write it as non-bold r, is going to be uh, square root, uh, by Pythagorean theorem, of uh, rho squared plus h squared. Uh, so, if we have a sub r over r squared, R squared. <clears throat> That's going to be, well, this, this guy over here, uh, divided by this, and um, yeah. So now we have this, and we're going to just plug that into uh, our integral here. Okay, this a sub r gets replaced with the other unit vectors that we have, and uh, this goes whoa. No, not that. Uh, this guy goes in the numerator. We can, uh, let's get this out of here. Factor out rho sub s because it's actually, in fact, constant. And uh, r squared is just, um, is just this, this guy. Well, oh, oh, ho, ho, almost made a mistake here. Caught my, some of you might have caught me already and have been like, what are you doing? You forgot. Um, but actually, A sub R, see, this, this is where I made my mistake. And, and I believe in making mistakes. Mistakes are where you learn. This is good. I put this for A sub R. Okay, that is not right. This is R. Okay, A sub R is the unit version of this. So, what do we have to do? And this is r squared, what? so, you know, I <laughs> messed up twice. I shouldn't have, first of all, this should have been squared, so it should have been like that. Second, this guy in the numerator should have been divided by its magnitude because it is, in fact, a unit vector, so you have to divide by the magnitude. So then the net of these two guys is going to be, it's going to take this, and uh, it's actually going to be to the three halves. That's our unit if we're using the unit vector and dividing it by r squared. So it's this. So if you caught that, bravo. Uh, you know, you should catch things like that. So, and it's important you don't make the same mistake, you know. So let's plug. Well, we already got the top part in. Uh, this is going to be plugging this in. We could factor out a 4 pi epsilon 0 because those are all constant. And um, uh, now we have this dot ds here. Now, okay, um, well, we're going to leave that in. We're going to take care of that in a second. Now, so we have electric, we have contributions from the electric field in the rho and the z direction. But if you look, if you look at this geometry, okay, uh, any contribution in the rho direction, like this little pinkish, this little pink square right here, is going to be canceled out 
by the one on the opposite side. And this is going to happen all around. So consequently there's no contribution in the row direction because there's always one across from it that's the opposite sign that's going to cancel it out. And this can be proven uh, just by integrating these with certain limits. I'm not going to do it because it's going to make the video longer than it should be, but um, I will explain how to do it, um, well, right now. Because uh, <laughs> we're, we're looking at the DS here, dot DS. So these right here are your differential surface elements for polar coordinates. Again, I, I can't prove these in this video. That's more of a vector analysis thing. I, I probably will make a video of proving these um, maybe later. Um, but we're dotting it with this vector. This is a vector. So if we take this and, well, let's make a new line. And we're going to dot it with this. No, I don't want to erase. We're going to dot it with this. Now, if you did want to try to prove that there is in fact nothing in the row direction, you would just do this dot product and put the limits accordingly based on this geometry. And then you just evaluate the integral and it would come out as zero. Uh, in this case, we, are, we said we just want to get rid of the row direction because we know that there's not going to be anything in that just by uh you know logic so the only component here to be dotted now is z um and oh did i uh oh no <laughs> mislabeled this this guy should be z um so we're gonna dot these guys together and we're gonna get well oops don't want to do that right, we're gonna let's make a new line here so, this guy is not going to be dotted with anything, so it goes zero. And it's rho d rho d, f d phi. We're using phi as the angle here. I know sometimes it's typically they typically use uh, theta, but we're using the phi in this case. So, when you dot the z, a sub z's, they go to one because this h goes over here because uh, they're unit vectors in the same direction. And uh, let's let's move these differentials to the outside. There. Now we just have to integrate this. Uh, so let's let's establish our limits. I'm gonna make a new integral here. We got uh, integral integral that. Now, row limits are from uh, zero to infinity because we are integrating the whole plane and phi limits go from 0 to 2 pi. Come on, get in the box. There we go. Now, uh, we can actually just, there's, this thing doesn't, this integrand doesn't depend on any the angle at all. So we can just do this outer integral first. And uh, let's, let's in fact do that. So that's just going to be simply have a 2 pi outside, but then the pi's are going to cancel, this is going to become a 2, and that's going to cancel. So now we just have this. Um, well, we can factor out the h2, because that's constant. Um, so we simply do a u substitution. u is equal to uh, rho squared plus h squared down here. And du is equal to 2 rho squared, or 2 rho, sorry, uh, d rho. Uh, now we can plug these guys into this integral. It's purely mathematical right now. This becomes a. Um, well, let's let's see. This this is gonna become a four. And uh, this goes to one. This becomes a du. This down here becomes a u. So it's much simpler. Well, let's let's. Uh, Let's, let's do each step. So this becomes actually, we're going to just kick this up to the numerator, make it negative. So uh, integrate this. And uh, well, 
negative 3 halves plus 1, negative 3 halves plus 2 halves, that's negative 1 half, then you have to divide by it, so you multiply by negative 2. So it's u to the negative 1 half times negative 2. And um, we're just going to replace u by what it actually equals, which is this. And uh, this is evaluated between 0 and infinity. Oops. Infinity. Let's put brackets around this so it's easier. There. So when you plug in infinity, or, you know, let's put the, we're going to put this in a, I'm just rewriting this. I'm not changing anything. Just rewriting it to 1 over the square root of that. That's all I'm doing. Um, so you plug in infinity, you get 1 over infinity, you get 0. So uh, this, and then it's 0 minus, you plug in 0 for rho, and you get 1 over h. There we go. You do this, and you're going to get, um, that's your final answer. E equals, this video might be a little bit longer than I would like. Well, hey, what are you going to do? Rho sub s, uh, these twos cancel, the negatives go out, and you get over 2 epsilon 0. Let's check my notes here. Rho sub s over 2 epsilon 0. Oh, and, um, this is, um, yeah, I, this is in the z direction. So, let's see here. Yeah. Um, cause, uh, yeah, we, we actually lost. No, this should be fine. Yeah, it's in, that, this is in the z direction. So, um, let's put a little box around this. This right here is your electric field um, for a infinite plane. Now, um, z is the normal to the xy plane, but if you had it in the yz plane, um, that would act, the x would be the normal. So in general, this z is written as n, um, where a sub n is your normal vector to the plane. And, um, yeah, it's, and you know it's in the z direction because there was only the z component of the e was able to be dotted together. So, um, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.